Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanalee's Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have me back because I've been quite sick recently. So, yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, start off with a game between Scrangos and Orange Sky on Frostburn. A couple players we haven't seen very much of. I think Orange Sky was in the last tournament. Scrangos was, I believe, also in that tournament. It was it's been a while. I <laughs> have not been able to do this in a long time. Anyway, Scrangos going for spiders, Orange Sky going for tanks, and I feel like this map is going to be favoring spiders. It isn't a map I've seen very much before, so I'm just going to go over briefly. So yeah, cliffs! Cliffs everywhere! Which is a bit of a problem for the tanks, because I mean, you know, tanks are kind of limited to where they can go. Now granted, it's not so bad. It's, like, red just means it slightly slows things down. But still, the fact that spiders can easily deal with cliffs and tanks can't make things a little bit tricky. On the other hand, it's not a particularly high set of elevation changes, and... Did I? Oops. So, it shouldn't be a massive problem, but it is going to be interesting. I expect that the spider player... I expect that Scrangos is going to have a bit of an easier time just getting around, but then again... This is mostly flat, so Orange Sky will have the advantage if they don't have to go up and down ramps too much. Otherwise, yeah, it's all going to be Scrangos. So admittedly, it's kind of a pretty map. I mean, granted, I'm looking at the the snow packs as the ramps go in, and I'm like, I can tell how it was done, like in the actual editing stuff, because I've I've done this trick myself in terms of how to very smoothly set up snow text or snow as far as ramps go. But it still looks nice. Anyway. Orange Sky, seeing Scrangos building up a little bit, getting you know, some solar plants all over the place. Orange Sky is expanding a little bit more slowly, actually, and I like that radar tower placement. This map should make it a little bit difficult to radar a lot. I mean, we're going to be seeing... Let's check right now. Oh, no, it's high enough. It is high enough for sure that that actually can go through here. Unfortunately, the other side of the main plateau in the center is going to be difficult to look past, but that's kind of to be expected. Still, i pretty keen on seeing how Orange Sky does handle the fact that they are at a slight disadvantage cliff-wise. Especially going up ramps here, because the way that this map is set up is very easily defensible. Like, the thing is, we're seeing Scrangles already setting up a bunch of solars on the side, because they're playing spiders. They don't need to worry about any walls over the side, so they can just build up the walls of the solar plants, and they're fine. But, of course, Orange Sky can't do that. Their entire base, it's just the ramps. That, that's all they have to get out. On the other hand, Orange Sky is being very aggressive. Going for this plus five metal extractor on the eastern side of the map right off the bat. That is daring, but to be fair, Scrangos is not going for any raids. Scrangos is being very defensive, all things considered. And that's going to slow them down a lot. Orange Sky already with plus five metal advantage. And they're two minutes in the game. That is meaningful. Same time. Oh. Well, so much for that fleet. <laughs> At the same time, Scrangos trying to scout a little bit. Orange Sky not having any of that. And I think Orange Sky is actually kind of be setting up quite quickly. The thing about tanks is that you do need a lot of metal to get set up because most of the units are fairly expensive for their class. Like, Kodachi's a raid with 160 cost compared to most raiders, like a third of that. I mean, your main frontline force, 500, 850, like, that's two or three times basically any other factory. So you do want to make sure that you are set up properly. But that's something which, I mean, Orange Sky is doing. They're doing exactly that. They have the they have this set up, they have the metal extractors, 10 metal per second on the sides alone. I mean, Scrangos is expanding, but nowhere near as quickly. So Orange Sky right now, they're making they're making sure they have that metal advantage, and they are taking advantage of it, getting the Ogres as well, which I, I'm trying to think in terms of Spider versus Tank. It's not a match we see very often. Ogres should be okay. Reckless, of course, being the main problem, as with any Raider, or sorry, any Riot, Skirmishers are going to be a problem. But that is not the majority of Scrangos' army. On the other hand, the majority of Scrangos' army is going to be just wrecked. I mean, Venom red Redback against Ogres. Oof, a couple Ogres, and that is not going to go over well. And of course, the Minotaurs coming in as well. That's going to make it even harder to get any real damage in. The Minotaurs might even be able to tank the Recluse, allowing the Ogres to get in or force the Recluse back. Of course, on the other hand, Spiders can retreat over the cliffs, so it may not even matter. Stands though already, Karachi coming in here, and very quickly getting destroyed by Venoms as the Ogre comes in and gets its revenge. Nicely avenged by Kodachi, taking out the Venom, taking out the Redback soon after, or at least 
forcing it to retreat, forcing the entire retreat to Scrangos' forces. And that is going to be a bit of a problem for Scrangos. They're losing the center. They already have lost the edges, which are the majority of the metal. So Orange Sky is getting way ahead on this. Scrangos doing actually surprisingly well, despite that. Orange Sky hasn't really expanded all that much to the side. And Scrangos did get one of the side expansions, but still, that's 15 metal versus 5 on the sides. And if control of the center goes over to Orange Sky, they should be able to manage to just get way ahead here. The one downside, of course, being the Recklesses. As I mentioned earlier, the Recklesses are just wrecking the Ogres. But it may not, even, may not even matter. At the same time, the Welder going into the south is losing its own life. And at the same that is going to open up this northwest side. So Scrango should be able to take out the northwest plus five expansion that Orange Sky has set up. Orange Sky with the Kodachi trying to defend, but if... If Scrangos decides to go for it, that Kodachi will do nothing. An Ogre would be fine, but a Kodachi is just not enough firepower. I do like the fact that Scrangos, sorry, that Orange Sky is deciding to have that Ogre get repaired, though. That is really wise. That is one thing about playing tanks. you got to make sure that you are as best as possible for everything other than Kodachis and maybe Blitzes, and if you can, repair them. Repair your units. So that is a real... Oh. Sorry, someone in chat pointing out that OBS is able to support cool mats for transitions. I should look into that. I actually did see that. Friend, uh, one of my co-casters from another game actually was doing that. I thought they were doing some of their own homebrew tricks, but I guess if it's in there, that is so cool. I, I'll have to look into that. I mean, I don't know when I'm going to have the time. I've been sick and busy. You can still tell I have a bit of a cold. So, yeah, if you're wondering why there hasn't been a lot of stuff, it's because I've been sick. However, that is not the case for Orange Sky. They're clearly doing fairly well for themselves. With... That was the worst... Oh, man. So, well, I'm clearly stuck. I'm not, even, I'm not even committing to my own corny transitions. So, Orange Sky, they are well set up. And they have the... The eastern side is completely theirs. The western side, they are, I think, sufficiently well defended. But it looks like they're setting up for an attack. If the ogre pathfinding... Would work. Yeah, that's that's a bit of a shame. Unfortunately, so is or so is Scrangos with the Rexes coming in and not a whole lot that's actually going to contest them. And the Welder not even being stopped. Why is the Welder not moving? Well, it can't move anymore. It's quite dead now. Of course, at the same time, the north, the western side is being well defended, but that eastern side could be opened up. And now that Welder being destroyed. Not a whole lot's going to be there to build more defenses or rebuild defenses or repair things as needed. Not to mention Orange Sky, you might want to get a couple more characters. Actually, no, this is fine. In fact, they should be fine. If the welder... Why is the welder not assisting? I don't know. That's probably a misclick. That welder should be assisting. I have no idea why it isn't. No, priority's fine and just commands aren't set. That's a shame. Because if that welder was assisting, Orange Sky would not be having any issues. But even then, they're doing okay when it comes to not accessing. But again, with tanks, you want to have like 30 metal per second going into the factory minimum in order to be viable. It's the one downside of the factory. The units are individually very powerful, and if you get a large force of it, it's like having a couple striders. But you need to have 30, 40 metal per second just at minimum. And it looks like, okay, well, they're, they're addressing it at the very least. They do see more caretakers are necessary and are building the additional caretakers as needed. Of course, that may not matter. Scrangos is going to be able to wipe out this eastern or southeast... Metal Extractor, which admittedly the Overdrive is working beautifully for it. Unfortunately, none of the defenses are in place, and there certainly aren't the units either. In fact, I would kind of recommend Orange Sky just go for a counterattack. Just send in the Minotaur and Ogre into this Stinger and destroy it. I mean, Scrangos has the eastern side. They've, they've taken it. It's gone. It's done. Orange Sky is going to try to defend with the Pillagers, but there simply isn't the firepower on Orange Sky's side here. But the firepower is pretty available over on the other side. I mean, it's... Yeah, with the Stinger being destroyed, Orange Sky could very easily just actually probably get into Scranguis' base. Like, could literally march into Scranguis' base. That would force Scranguis to retreat, saving the eastern side of the map. That is pretty much all that Orange Sky can do if they want to defend it. They cannot fight back with the units they have at hand. This is not going to be enough firepower. But this could at least scare Scranguis into getting back to their base... And if that happens, Scrangos is going to be forced to retreat, and that's going to save things up. That's going to keep Orange Sky avail able to keep their economy going. But I don't think Orange Sky quite realizes that. Which, 
Actually, to be fair though, they are fighting back reasonably well. I mean, I don't, like I said, I still don't expect the firepower is there, but it looks like they're still managing to force Scrangos to rout. Like, Scrangos is regrouping, they're reconsidering whether or not they can actually fight it, and I was wrong. I mean, Scrangos could go for it, it would be a suicide mission, but they would be able to win. However, Orange Sky just scaring Scrangos enough to make Scrangos rethink their strategy. Sometimes that's all you need. I mean, Scrangos still approaching the center, but they've lost that southwest side of the map. Orange Sky hasn't bothered to deal with it yet, but still, they've actually bought themselves enough time to get the units they'll need. In a couple Minotaurs coming in, repairs are coming back up, but Minotaurs are coming in. The Kodachi is able to at least deal some damage. Without that Venom there, the Kodachi is able to do a lot of work. Considering that, it, you kind of need that to deal with getting through the Recluses. That makes a lot of sense. Of course, Minotaur and Ogre are going to have a bit of a harder time with the Recluses, but at the same time, they're being very efficient. Or, well, they should be. I mean, they're not dying is the important thing. On the other hand, Orange Sky doesn't have a huge amount to deal with this force directly. Scrangos is just getting a little bit skittish. Like, they've gotten cold feet on the attack, and that's given Orange Sky enough time to bulk up. They, or bulk up their defenses. I just feel like Orange Sky could actually kind of go for a counterattack now. Or at least start raiding out a couple of these metal extractors. Maybe not go for the main base, but raid out the metal extractors. You know, just reduce Scraggles' economy a little bit. That would probably work. I, oh, I mean, Wesley Boss pointing in the chat. Orange Sky needs an emissary. Orange Sky has plenty. Orange Sky has how many emissaries? Four emissaries all over the place. Actually, the emissaries have been doing really good work. That's been helping out with the recluses. It's just the recluses have been avoiding them wisely. Instantly, missile silo. Ooh, ooh, that is gonna be tough to deal with. Missile silo under shields with stingers. When, actually, no. Two minotaurs should be enough. Orange Sky is aware that something is up. They are aware, you know, stuff is being built here. They have full radar coverage. So, this is not unknown to them. They know or they know that Scranguis is up to something. They don't know exactly what, and it's going to be a bit tough to get through the shields. But, they know it's something. How many shields do they have here? Oh. Oh, that's not much. They're 600 against two, pill or against two emissaries. Yeah, three more shots. That's going to start penetrating the shields. And... Uh, okay, two more shots. The shields are regenerating quite quickly. There it is. There is that shot coming in. They're starting to get that stingers. Fortunately, there's the Minotaur coming in here, being torn to pieces by all of the Rexes and the stingers, but the Emissary is doing his job. That's the important thing. The Emissary's coming in here, wiping out the stingers. The two Emissaries, rather. Orange Guy being wise about knowing when to retreat, but still, got through the shields, got damage on the stingers, but it's not quite enough. See, the problem is, this Inferno is the key thing, and that is going to be what we're going to be seeing doing a lot of damage very shortly. Probably in the main base. Although, to be fair, there's not a great set of targets for it. I mean, the main target you want for the Inferno is, like, a bunch of power structures, maybe stuff like the wind generators. But we don't see that. When we do, however, see their owl coming in here, trying to find what targets they can find. And Scrangos does know everything. Then was, actually, no, that's not Scrangos. This is Scrangos. Scrangos does, in fact, know everything. And there's the Inferno coming in onto the Caretakers. Very good choice of target there. Orange Sky is... Like I said before, absolutely needs those caretakers. Probably going to go for the wind gens as well. And there it is, indeed. Going for the wind generators. Actually going for the entire power infrastructure, which should slow down Orange Sky a little bit. The main problem for Orange Sky, though, is the caretakers. Losing those is a massive blow. All the caretakers are going to go down. The factory is taking a lot of damage. Well, a lot of... Not as much damage, but it's unable to produce. Which might as well be damage for how much Orange Sky is actually able to do stuff. Same time, though, Orange Sky is making sure to use that metal as best they can around the entire map, so they're not they're not wasting metal. That's the important thing. Scrangos try to make sure that Orange Sky would excess. Thus far, Orange Sky is doing a really good job of keeping their metal above, or keeping their metal production above their, sorry, keeping their metal usage above their metal production. They want to avoid excess. That is the key thing. Unfortunately, those Infernos are going to be a major thorn in Scrangos' society. I mean, any, anywhere they move their army, anywhere they start building up infrastructure, if they start rebuilding the, the caretakers, it's going to be a problem. I would actually recommend Orange Sky start just getting several welders in their main base instead of caretakers. Welders are relatively close in build power, and they're mobile. But it looks like Orange Sky is going to rebuild caretakers instead, which makes a lot of sense. They are still cheaper. 
it's just gonna be a lot easier for Scrangos to destroy than Welders, which have like, four times the HP and are mobile. And again, there's the Inferno going in the main army on top of that, on top of all the Reckless's, on top of all the Stingers, preventing anyone from coming in. Now, granted, the Stingers have been... Well, like, the shields are damaged, the Stingers are fine. Scrangos' commander being the primary target for the Minotaurs, and it is not going to be very productive, unfortunately, for that... Oh, if that Igus had been the main target, it would have gone down, and that would have made it very easy for the Emissaries to start dealing meaningful damage. But unfortunately, that did not happen. Fortunately, Orange Guy is still able to defend, and they still have a massive economic lead. I mean, to be fair, same thing this is happening. Ogre's going on in the back lines, getting rid of the fusion plant, wiping out Scranglis' majority of their economy, wiping out a huge amount of their energy economy. Should be able to take out that, that air plant pretty soon. Go for the caretaker. Go for the caretaker. That's all you got. The ogre does go down, but hey, getting rid of fusion plant, that wipes out almost all of Scranglis' energy economy. The explosion wiped out all the solar plants on top of that. On top of the fact that the solar wall was destroyed in order for the ogres get it, to get in in the first place. So Scrangos is now heavily energy starved. Of course, they have a huge army. And it's an army that's well equipped to deal with the stuff that Orange Sky is putting at them. But at the same time, Orange Sky, I mean, they don't have to worry about any more nukes or any more Inferno missiles. I mean, they can't build Infernos if they don't have the metal and energy to build them with. So Orange Sky, with all the caretakers, is doing a great job just getting their economy back on track and getting their military back in position. This should be it. There's the Emissaries doing their job, wiping out all of the Recluses. And Scrangos, I don't know if they want to throw in the towel at this point because they don't have a whole lot to play with. They really don't have a whole lot to work with. At this point, Orange Sky just setting up a safe army to work with. From there, they'll be pushing into the center. If they wipe out that center... They wipe out the missile silo. Scrangos basically has no assets to their name. Scrangos is desperately trying to rebuild the energy production they had before. Because with that, they can at least get the overdrive back and get some of their economy back on track. But Orange Sky, they are way ahead. And Scrangos realizing this throws in the towel. Orange Sky takes the game with a really solid lead near the end. I mean, metal income was relatively close throughout the game, but at the very end, it became Scr it became Orange Sky's game thoroughly. Though, to be fair, Scranglis did do a really good job with what they had. Like, value killed by Orange Guy and Scranglis was very easy, even. Orange Guy was slightly ahead most of the time, but considering that for all that entire period, Scranglis had a massive disadvantage on their army, yeah, Orange Guy did a pretty good job just... I would say, Scranglis did a pretty good job being fairly efficient considering that. Because, again, spiders versus tanks, spider units are a lot cheaper and are still quite effective. They're mostly glass cannons, so you've got to be careful, but still... Tanks, on the other hand, they're, they are tanks, is in the name. It, they're very tough units, so yeah, it's difficult to get through them, but it's easy enough to overwhelm them in numbers. But unfortunately for Scrangos, they never had an income advantage. Orange Sky always had the income advantage, which again, they needed, but they also had it. So they had what they needed to win. Yeah, Steel Blue pointing on the chat there thought that the the Inferno would nail it. No, the Inferno wouldn't finish it because these wind generators were not that much. They're like 10-ish energy out of what the time was like 60, 70. There were solar plants everywhere. Orange Guy did a really good job decentralizing their base because they're basically playing this as if it was Supreme Commander. Like set up solar collectors around every single metal extractor and as close as possible for the adjacency bonus. I mean, doing that isn't... I'm joking because there's actually a... Key. I think it's Control-Alt when you're doing the... I'm sorry, control shift. Control shift will make the will make things surround. See if a metal extractor control shift the thing and it just builds up. So yeah. That's actually a really nice little convenience feature. Which all Orange Sky was doing, but it meant that they had a decentralized econ or decentralized energy which economy, which meant the Inferno couldn't really do much. And it also meant that, you know, these plus five metal extractors get in the overdrive. That is extremely valuable. Oh, LeBron R is apparently Golda. Cool, hello. Anyway, we're going to be moving on to another game, and it is going to be a game between... Who did I pick? What replay would I pick there? Oh, yeah, right. Dice and King Lunchbox on Red Comet. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned. Jeez, the downside of being 60. I forget how you actually make this whole thing work. Ah. <sighs> 